greetings everyone good greetings families and friends and also greetings to my loyal enemies thank you so much uh, for ev to everyone who's been watching my podcast watching my videos and telling me well done to what you're doing thank you i just want to appreciate you all tonight i'm talking about men of god please men of god pastors okay i want to beg i'm i'm appealing i'm seriously appealing that all these things going on on Facebook, men of God bashing themselves, cursing themselves out, trying to expose each other. I think the time to do that, there's more time to study your scriptures, to understand your scriptures and to study it right. Because sometimes when you have your members, you have favorites in, in church, you draw them closer, you tell them things, certain things that worldly people will normally gossip with their friends and families or whatever. Then it start happening in churches. That's when you see that when they break out, then they start saying, I've hold your secret. I need to, if you don't do this, if you don't do that, threatens and all of that. I think that should stop. Many people right now don't want to go to church anymore because church is becoming a big racket in Nigeria or in Africa or in the world. It's becoming a very big racket. Anybody can just say, God called them. Ask one or two questions or see vision or prophesy or whatever. They are automatically a pastor. Please, this is not called for. It's not nice to the body of Christ. It's not. You just open social media right now. The first thing that pops up is pastor condemning another pastor. Pastor saying this one is not right. What this one said. If God really give you the word, if God called you as a man of God, as a preacher, as his disciples, as God sent, God called, God anointed, you will not argue with the scriptures. Because when a real man of God sits down to talk, not theologies, they talk about the word, the undiluted word from the scripture. The Bible says, search in the scriptures. By the time you ask questions, once it's been given to you, you be able to bring it out from the inside, from the inside to those who doesn't understand it. But these days you see some men of God fighting each other, most especially the areas of tithes and offerings. What I understand about tithes is 10% of your income, what the works of your hands, what you do as a job is your 10%, right? Then the offering is a free will thing. Thanksgiving. Is what you, you, you worked like. If you're, if you're a farmer, you bring your harvest. You bring your plantain. I bring my yam. The other one bring their mango. Then when the one who brought mango is going, the one that has yam, they will swap. They will take from each other. They say, bring ye the tithe so that the house will have plenty. What's the meaning of that? Now the tithe is being paid. The tithe is to enhance the gospel. The tithe and the offerings is to look after the church for the equipment, the roof, the building, or to build others, or to print flyers, or to, to just enhance the gospel. And widows in the house, those who can't afford their bills, just imagine when the pandemic happened. Those are what tithes are on freeze are for. To be able to help those who are in need, desperately in need. True? Please, search the scriptures. If God really called you, don't fight your pastors. Don't fight each other. Forget about the theology side. Go and have encounter with God. Go and study. Most of you right now, even your wives are not showing good examples. Even yourselves, you are not showing good examples. When you see a real man of God, we want to be able to identify true men of God. When we see a true man of God, we want to say, yes, this is God-filled. This is Christ-like. But these days, we don't have it. Even we have it, arrogance is becoming too much. Is creeping into the house of God. Those we look up to people like me, that I look up to so many of you pastors, 
now you're all fighting yourself individually online. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, I watched some who was talking about how they talked about uh, Ben He, how they talked about this, how they talked. No. Men of God in Nigeria, please stop comparing yourselves with the American pastors. They are not holy than you. You are not holy than them. What you need to do, check, forget about your capacity. Forget about the flight, the jet flight or whatever, private jets. Forget about the, 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 the congregations. Forget about the money. Focus on the word of Christ. Please. When a Nigerian pastor, when the man of God has fall down or done something wrong, let me use the word, done something wrong, they come out to apologize publicly. The way you rebuke all the Bible says chastise those that he love. The way you rebuke others, why don't you rebuke the man of God like that? Why is the man of God not coming out to say, sorry, we got it wrong. But now I've said this, now this has happened, we are sorry. No, these days it doesn't work like that. Comparing yourself with him. When Benny, he was talking about prosperity, prosperity. He came out to say sorry. He came out to apologize. That he's not he's going to offend so many pastors, so many of his friends. But there's no way in the scripture that said prosperity. There is no way that says is how much you give to God, God gives to you back. There is no way. You can, what about those who are poor? Because the Bible tells me and you that the poor will always have among us. So what about those poor people? You want to tell me? Is the amount of money they give God will bless them? No, no. And you forget, many poor in your church, they still pay tithe and offerings. Let them look up to you well. Please, this is a friendly advice and a sisterly advice to all pastors. We want to hear the word. We want to hear the word of God, the undiluted word of God. We don't want you guys to be associating with with the wrong words please we want to hear from you guys we want to hear the true word from you guys please please it's becoming too much it's not good for body of christ it's not good it's not you go to church these days you don't even hear the real sermon in church you don't even hear preaching for one hour complete Use one Bible verse to talk, dilute it, break it down, bring it to, to the position where it's supposed to be. But these days, we can quote 20 scriptures at the end. We can't get the undiluted word. Why? And also, many things has taken over in church. Dancing, praises, all free time. Praises time is more than the time of preaching. Let's look into that. Our generation. My generation, we, 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 we serve God. We understand the things of God. We went to church. We understand a little bit. Some of us understand more a little bit. Why some of us? We've made mistakes. Don't get me wrong. But this generation right now, they don't even want to go to church. They don't even want to know anything about God. They don't even want to know anything about churches. Because they look at you and look at who you, where you are going to. So please, I hope this find whosoever that sees this well. Please, let those small, small churches grow in these days. You start well, but when money cropped in, it becomes another thing. But please, I hope this little friendly message gets to the right place. Please, please, we need to hear the word. When there is a calamity in the land, when there is problem in the land, when there is problem at home, who do you run to? You run to the prophet, to the pastors, to the apostles. But these days, Please, men of God, preach the word. Teach the word. Don't fight each other. They condemn you. They say anything, but keep up with the word. Don't come and be fighting each other. That is not Christ-like. I hope you enjoyed this. And may the Lord bless you all and make his face to shine upon you. Thank you. From Prissy, Family Talk Show. Love you all.